It has already been a few weeks now since I received this beautiful mount, unboxed it, was really happy. And then you might have wondered what happened? Why is there no review? Now there are two reasons for that. And the first is the weather. It's beautiful now, but it's only beautiful since a few days. And before, as in many other places in this world, there were eternal clouds. And the other point is that when I want to do a review of something so special, I want to do it right. And I really needed time to understand the software, how this mount really works. And so when you only have one night per three weeks or so, it just takes its time. But actually it was kind of good because I also had a lot of time in my basement to work at stuff like the cable management. I got new equipment like the Eagle and I had to integrate all of that. So but now we're ready. So let's start with the review of the Avalon M0. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So before we actually, in a very structured way, look at the pros and the cons of this mount, I think let's sum it up with my experience last night. I came up here to my terrace and it took me about 10 minutes to set everything up, get the Nina sequence started, and I could go down again. The rig did everything on its own, without flaw, and even there was a full moon practically, and I was shooting the Eagle Nebula right beside the moon, I had an RMS of about 0.6. So I think that sums it perfectly up. So from today, from the point where I'm standing right now, I couldn't be happier with this mount. So I think we start with the pros, and then we go to the few cons. There are always a few issues. So the first pro, and I can only reiterate what you already heard from me over and over and over, this mount is simply beautiful. And even taste is different, I think we can all agree on that. It is really a looker. And I see that whenever I post a photo of it on Instagram, it raises attention. And be it in the basement for the cloudy weeks or being now out here, it just looks good. And while you might say this doesn't really matter for astrophotography, it is just something that makes me happy. And I think if it would really not be about the looks, then the Red Cat would never have really that much of a success. Now, the second part is the self-balancing, which I think is really cool. And you see that very nicely here. On top, I have my imaging rig and my scope. And on the bottom, to counter the weight, I have my eagle and my guide scope. And then all I still need is, I think this is 500 grams to actually bring the whole thing in balance. 500 grams, that is all. And what comes with this is how easy it actually is to disassemble and assemble the whole rig. Again, once you did your homework. I only have to unplug four cables here, which belong to that. I can take the whole image train off. And I think it's another three cables I have to uh, disconnect here. I can take the whole lower part off. And then it's just the rig. And if I really want to disassemble it, it's one screw and the upper part comes from the tripod and everything is in four parts and I can move it along. And in the same way, it's very fast assembled again. It's very fast in balance again. And what is also connected with that is the cable management. The mount has a great way to actually connect the upper part, the arm, to the tripod. The next things you cannot see this is on one side the accuracy. As I mentioned, I'm down by 0.6 RMS. And this is now with the full moon. So I'm really anxious to see what I get down when I actually will use it when it's no moon. But actually for this kind of scope, it doesn't really matter. And then the other thing I really love about it, and I mentioned that in the unboxing, as it was also a real conscious buying factor, was no meridian flip. And that really works perfectly here. 
you do not need to make a meridian flip. This scope can actually go in each axis without hitting anything. So you never have to worry. You never have to enter a meridian flip or plan for it. And for me, this is a huge relief. When it comes to polar alignment, I use Nina three-point polar alignment, and that works perfectly. And during the three-point alignment, to actually really adjust the scope to the polar error, it's really easy here. It is one dial here and these knobs, and you can extremely accurately do these changes. And once you have done them, they're staying, they're put. Also here, the software that is delivered with the Avalon mount and the ASCOM driver works together perfectly with Nina. I haven't had any timeout, any issues, any communication issues between the softwares at all. It just works. What I also appreciate compared to my CPC, obviously, but that's with any travel mount, is its lightweight. If I want to move it from the basement to here, all I take off is the imaging train. I put the legs together and I can easily move the whole thing up here. Just put the imaging train on it again and I'm ready to shoot. And I'm really looking forward to actually test this rig now in the field, in the dark skies, in the Swiss mountains. And the weather looks very promising for that, I have to say. Now, as you can see, I'm really excited about the M0 mount. But are there any cons? And yes, of course, because this is not an infomercial, but it's my personal review. And there are always cons. There's always trade-offs. And it's probably less cons. It's just something you need to know when you buy this mount. And the first one is the self-balancing. And you remember I just mentioned it as a pro. So why is it also a con? Now this self-balancing concept works perfectly as long as you leave the scope like this. It's a charm. But if you're the guy who also has a 8-inch SCT, and what you want to do is the first part of the night, you put the SCT on and you shoot some galaxy, and then you want to take this imaging rig off and you put the wide lens on and you shoot the nebula, then this is the wrong mount for you. Because if I will put now a massively heavier scope on this rig, then I actually have to screw here this arm off and put it more down. That the whole weight actually gets down and over, you know, the middle that it balances again. And so from my perspective, this mount is made for a scope, for, for a whole setup, and you leave it like that. Or you change it once before galaxy season or something like that. But this is not something you change during a night. And the same is with the equipment change. For example, I soon will go mono, I get another camera, I get an off-axis guider, so I do not need the guide scope anymore. This will need some thinking again from a balancing point of view. I might have to change things that it's self-balanced again. It will be at the end, but it's not something you do in 10 minutes. It's not just putting another weight on the bottom. And that's just something to know. The second thing is the complexity of this mount or getting your mind around it. And I think I'm a good measurement here because it was my first dedicated equatorial mount. The CPC was on a wedge, something completely different. And I have to say, it was, it was tough learning. It was a steep learning curve. On one side, things like that with his arm, with the self-balancing, but also from a software point of view, understanding the settings, how it works. It took some time, it took iterations, and I finally made it. But honestly said, I don't know if this is the perfect mount for an absolute beginner. <laughs> but this point might be irrelevant because from a, <laughs> from a price point of view, 
Probably it's also not the first mount that you usually buy. But I think for someone who already has some experience, it is definitely doable. It's like with picks inside, you need to put a little bit more in at the beginning, but you get a lot more out afterwards. And I think the last con, it's a detail, but it kind of bugged me. You see back here, the screws, I put them on. Before that, there was a little plastic knob on there, like you have here or here, to actually screw it on when you want to use it and to, to make it loose when you want to balance it. Now, the issue is that you need to apply such force to really actually fix it tightly so that it can not move anymore on its own without the motor that I was actually scared that I break the plastic off. What I then did, I put just a normal screw in, a long screw with some knots in between so that it really has pressure. And I tighten it now with screwdriver. It's a small thing. I had to figure it out. I found the solution works perfectly now. But I just think for the quality of the mount, probably, you know, <laughs> something in metal would solve the problem from the beginning. So that's also a feedback that I gave to Avalon. But this is actually it. These are all the cons that I could find. And I think given all the pros that I just mentioned, it's really neglectable. So to sum this up, if you're not an absolute beginner, and if you do not want to change the scope two or three times a night, then this is a dream mount. This is absolutely perfect in any sense, accurate, easy to use, easy to transport, easy to disassemble. I would not know actually what I would wish more. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any question, please leave it in the description below. And well, see you next time and yes, clear skies.